<coughs> That's the way the Tibetan book read the Tibetan book of the Dead Reading. Yeah. What were you going to say? I'm going to read that book. I don't have something to say. That's unlikely. <laughs> she told me she was working on questions of the self. Uh, I, did I say that aloud? Love I'm that. so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I think they talk of both of us were. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's true. true. What, what? Come on, pull it out. What we were talking about? Of course. It's way off the wall from this. That's why we like it off the wall. <laughs> All right. Um, on psilocybin, you get direct, um, you get direct dialogue with the self. And my question was, what blocks one from in her everyday life from having that same direct dialogue, which is so clear and easy on psilocybin? That's what we were talking about. Well, that was the last time. But, <laughs> but I mean, we were also talking. Could, about, perhaps you could re recollect a bit. Um, we were also talking about being in the state of the whole, yeah. and um, how that, uh, how we maintain that, and how the distractions or how the con inner conflicts shrink us down into the part, and that process is very interesting. Right, that's true. That's what we were talking about. And what did you offer? Um, I was, I really was talking about the lead up to the discussion that we had, you know, the mm -hmm. questions of Xenophanes, mm -hmm. the, or the statement of Xenophanes, and uh, we hadn't, we didn't really get uh, into the discussion that you and I were having, say, at the beginning of the t talk tonight, mm -hmm. we didn't get into that, um, so, but I'm sure that you could do more than justice to it. <laughs> Well, we were talking about whole and part, yeah. and, right. right? Well, we hadn't gotten to that point. We were talking about taking it as a, as a meditative exercise or an object of contemplation. The, ex the experience of that and what that's yeah. like to maintain in that. Yeah. yeah, and so Kathy hadn't been using, as far as I know, that exact phrase, but she was having similar cool... Those are the categories of, <clears throat> of the dialectic. And you were suggesting listening to Kathy's report of psilocybin? What well, was that what it was? Uh, well, it came into that, yeah. Um, um, let me think. Well, we were talking about um, the Papalogos. Mm -hmm. in the experience of the whole, okay. right? Okay. And right, at odds with the whole, mm -hmm. right, difficulties, and relating because of the pathologos, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the assumption is that once you're free of that, <clears throat> right, then you can stand and relate to the whole without these conflicts. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there's a whole, your focus is on the whole, to the parts, and freedom. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is self and others. Right? Freedom. With right? loss of conflicts, or reduction of conflicts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then there's still <clears throat> the problem of self and others. 
and that means all others, right? That means uh, <clears throat> nature, society, the cosmos, right? All of these are seen as essentially different. All of this stuff is different from the self. So the next stage is to discover that, uh-uh, that there is no significant difference between self and others, and therefore there's a sameness. Right? So there's stages of the dialectic. Yeah. As a developmental stages. Developmental stages. Yeah. Now, how does that help with, with what you experience? I'm not clear on it. Hmm? I'm not clear to answer that. I don't know how to answer that. We don't mind that. But the question is, do you want to talk about it or not? Is what the yeah. issue is. Um, what you're saying is, when you are... Um, Moving, when you're um, moving out of that pathologo state, you realize that there is no differentiation. It's sameness. And so if you're in the, I'm hypothesizing here, the psilocybin state, it's all available. It's all, all there all at once, so you can have that dialogue. Yeah, that's a freedom. It's, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, what is the, what is the sense of the experience between you as a subject and what you're experiencing? It's the same. Right? It's the same. In what way is it the same? Um, in that state, the question and the answer, it's the same, um, it's the self dialoguing with the self. It's all happening at the same time. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wondered whether you would talk about the actual experience rather than the analysis of it. Okay. You mean, what's it like to be in that experience? No, yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. Those are different. Um, it was, um, there's no conflict between bliss and dialogue. It was all one positive thing. Like I didn't have any, um, in that bliss state, which this psilocybin state is for me, <clears throat> I could experience the whole range of my pathologos questions and problems and not lose that bliss state. Yeah. How long did that state, has that stayed with you or was that in the... Um, well, the, the uh, real clarity of it uh, was just a periodic thing. No. But it stayed with me for many days, and then I tried a uh, 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 tiny dose, and I noticed that that tiny dose can stay with me and keep me going for a long, long time. So I'm experimenting and thinking about that. Okay. Mm. Um, see, what I was asking was whether or not you could describe some of the details of the experience. This is the force of my question. So. Yeah. Recall the experience, the details yeah. of the experience. That would match um, what you just described, which is a conclusion from, a, from an experience. Yeah, in the experience, when um, I went into the full effect of the psilocybin, I could see all the psychedelia, and I didn't care about it. Um, I deliberately said, I don't care about this. I see. And I want to know things. I want to? I want to know things. So I want I, to know things. I want to know. I want, I, wait a minute, I want to know or I want to know things? Okay. No, I just said, oh. I asked a question. I said, why do men hurt women? And what? why do men hurt women? And why did men hurt me? And I got a very curious answer that sounds all feminist, 
but I didn't take it that way. The answer was the point of touching the soul world to the physical world only happens in one place, and that's in a woman. And men elementally hate that if they're not resolved people. And it's an uncrossable line, mm -hmm. and they want to kill it. Like what? They want to kill that. They, they want to kill that. They want to kill that thing they can't have. Um, yeah. And I got a really secondary answer. That was my primary answer. Yeah. <laughs> and it was also related to the light that's in a person that they try to kill when you're, you know, in that high state. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you're in that high state, they want to knock you out. Mm -hmm. And the other answer was men feel culturally all over the world that they have to be the provider, the protector, and they know elementally that they can't be that ideal, and so they want to kill the women who think it. <laughs> Those were the two answers I got in that state. But I was really like shaking a lot in the state, mm -hmm. but it was not bad. It was like ex a whole bunch of energy. Mm -hmm. So um, what would have happened if you dropped the female role and just asked, why do men why are men in conflict? That's right. Man mankind is yeah, in conflict. Yeah, why are in conflict? Because we cannot have that high state that we know. We recognize the high state. What's the difference between those two questions? Mine was uh, taking it to my personal experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was a reflection of me trying to work through my pathologos mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. Did it work through your pathologist then, do you think? It gave me a real freedom. I, didn't str I have not struggled with that question again. Hmm. It doesn't bother me anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, but didn't you say that over time that diminished? Um, the question I have about over time is the dialogue. Mm -hmm. In that state, it felt to me that I could dialogue very directly, ask a question, have an answer, dialoguing. Mm -hmm. And in my everyday life, it's much smaller experience, that dialogue. Mm -hmm. It happens, but not with that clarity. Mm -hmm. And my question is, why? Finish it. Why? What is lacking here that I am not having that real clear dialogue as I was in the state? Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a nice question, isn't it? That came out of that experience. Yeah. What's the difference between talking about it the way you're now doing it and the way you talked about it before? Before today, you mean? No, 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 no. <coughs> before specificity or? That's right, before specificity. Well, I was hesitant to, you know, stretch it out and te give everybody a make, you know, all, you know, tell the story at length. I'm like, hmm. oh. How do you account for that hesitancy? Um, it's something that, <laughs> that Jeff and I have worked on in my, when I was a child, um, my father said, everybody, me against everybody and everybody against me by um, making me the golden child, the smartest one. He would only talk to me. And so all of us were blocked. And so I'm always careful about what I say, not to over take time and mm -hmm. be such a smart ass. That's my term for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, what should you have told him? My dad? Yeah. Ask my brother. Ask my sister. They can tell you too. Yeah. Did that answer the question? I'm not sure. What should I have said to my dad? Yeah. We're sitting at the table. He's not allowing them to speak. He won't even look at them. He won't look at my mother either. Just to me, the special one, the smart one. Mm -hmm. So I, ideally I could say, well, Dad, ask my brother too. He has something to say. Yeah. See, we were interested, I was interested in knowing the difference between the way you were talking 
when you are giving the details of that experience versus talking about it, which is what you were doing before. Right. It's, um, it, and you mentioned that you had a certain attitude about why you wouldn't normally have discussed those particular... Well, it's illegal. <laughs> you mean, why wouldn't I discuss my psilocybin experience? Um, it's quite, it's a, um, men don't like, I, I talked about this once with my friend and he got all huffy. <coughs> he said, well, not all men and oh, you women in your wombs, and, <laughs> and okay. so I'm a little... <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Fun. Got a question anyone wants to play with for a while? I have one. Uh, so on this process of waking, we become we gain more of the understanding of like the logos itself, yes. and we become more akin to it in our likeness. That's your issue, isn't it? Why is there the need to picture yourself right, and putting into words? Why is there that need? And as a consequence of that, to the degree that you can do it, hey, to the degree that you can do it, Why does that follow? Will you read it, please? Yeah. Hmm. Why is there a need <clears throat> to picture yourself confronting those who transmitted the pathologos to you? Why does it follow that to the degree that you can do it successfully, to the degree that you can do it successfully, that your very being is changed. That means, why is there a need for words? In, in Julie's case, right? Now you can, you know, like, that was all false. You had a you had a victory, and you and then you walk away from that thinking, discounting it, right? Mm -hmm. So now, so now, what's that going to enable you to do now, right? Mm -hmm. Or or appreciate? Yeah. And therefore, changed. I think. Yeah, Seems like why? it's like lighting a candle or lighting 
something, you know, about the, the realizing that words had not been put on that before. Why is it? Why is it important to put words on it? Though? It's like it, it lit it on fire. Or something. That's true. But why does it light it on fire? Because it was false. It was false. It was that was totally false. Yeah. That's she true. I love to answer. Now, <laughs> but when we put it, when we got put into words, then I got to see that. Until it was put into words, I couldn't even look in that direction. I couldn't even see that. Since you know it has that effect, why does it have that effect? That's the force of this question. Hmm. See, someone comes around and asks each of you the right questions, and you pop in, you get good answers, and you even go through changes. And then the last point they ask you in this interview is, Please account for why the words have made a difference. And using those words, and really, um, why is this, it's, it's a make-believe. Mm -hmm. right? When you're six years old and you're now, what, whatever age you're at, it's past. Why does even the make-believe scene of confronting, why is that significant? I'm thinking of Jeff, where he was threatened to be sent away to a reform school. He was so frightened he had no words. We can't say it back when we're little, so now... I agree with you. So but why are words important? It, words, words create, they change. Why do words make the change? Yeah. The they make the reality visible, so it can be seen. But why is it that words make reality visible? I think... Because uh, that's yourself. That's the language of the self. But if, hey, let's assume that's true. Why does it follow that those words, being the language of the self, can have the effect it has? I think uh, the words that we put on it, uh, they resolve the false conclusions that we came to, and then we put new conclusions. That's true, on is the that? Event. But did that answer the question? No. No, but it was good. It was good. Yeah. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> is it that the words are the highest form that we can understand something? in which we can understand something. Yeah. So unless it's reformulated in words, it's, we, get, we don't really get it. If it's something that we misunderstood because we formulated in words. Hmm. See, the whole, the whole movement of psychology is against this. Right. Modern psychology, the mind and words are not significant. The logo is not important. Hmm. Right. What do they do? Well, the basic model of behaviorism, right? Get someone to repeat whatever action they're doing that, that was caught up in there emotionally disturbed is because they haven't run it through. They have to keep going through it again and again and to dismiss the anxiety or the feeling state that accompanies that state. Mm -hmm. No, no understanding. Why is understanding so damn important? Well, understanding requires words. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But hey, I got a better one. Mm. 
if there is an answer, would I, you, recognize it immediately? Mm -hmm. Recognize its truth? If there is an answer to the pathologist? If there is an answer to this question, I think. Yeah. <laughs> if there is an answer to this question, okay. would you or I recognize its truth immediately? Should do. Should do. Should you? Okay, should. I put should. <laughs> could. No, if it's actually an answer that is true. I'll put should, could, would. May. May. Might. <laughs> I would say yes. And then Barbara's going to ask why. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> See, if that's true, <clears throat> uh, the question is, uh, does it presuppose certain conditions must be present for you to gain that? Or is it independent of any conditions? I think you, you have to be open to the... You have to be open to oh, that kind of... That's interesting. So you have to be open then the condition for that would have to be a certain openness to that kind of an answer. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I was at first going to say that you need an experience of that thing, putting it in words. But then I realized, like at Esalen, when we used to have strangers who hadn't been through a dream exercise themselves, they had no difficulty in, right. in recognizing um, what words did and that they were functioning in a certain way, though I don't know if they could put the no. name on it themselves, sure, sure, sure. but they didn't need these. That's right. Yeah. So I don't have an answer. Yeah, but that would suggest there's a common rationality among yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. That they can be appealed to. Yeah. 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 Well, look here, I have a solution. Let's meet next Friday and give a raise funds and offer a nickel to the person who can adequately answer this and <laughs> demonstrate it. Look, I got a nickel now, Brian. You got an answer? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Darn. You know, that really sounds like a culturally... I was thinking that Kathy's answer sound about the role of men and women, it really sounded like a, a culturally bound answer. Yeah, and he not opened, a universal. He opened it out to be in Did universal. He? Okay, okay. Yeah, I was thinking that's what we're looking at now. And um, so you're seeing that? Yeah, it's a good way to open it out. I, I feel like it's right. Okay. Because okay. I was also thinking when you were talking that I run into women who have absolutely crushed the light out of me and the life out of me be faster and better than any man ever did. I mean, people that were complete strangers. I was like, whoa. Well, that's verbal, but I'm also talking about like physical. Ah, well, okay. Does that well, there are some pretty tough women out there. Sorry. Good enough. Yeah, we were talking about that. Um, good beginning. Do it again. Mm -hmm. Does that imply that the kind of question we ask when in touch with self will determine the kind of answer we get back? Yes. Mm. So, the, so we're not always going to get a universal answer if we didn't ask a universal question. Right. So the answer is, your question and answer points to what you need at that moment to move through that thing. Yeah, it, 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 I'd like you to continue. 
Go ahead, do it. Oh, no, I had a question. I was like, in uh, addition to that. My question actually wasn't how I framed it that way. Like, there, there was a third part. Like, my real question takes off once you ask, um, uh, what is, what, once being changed, what's, what's it changed to? Now, I was trying to say that uh, we gain a better embodiment of the logos and, and its understanding and the way we use analogy and the way we uh, perceive reality in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask, essentially, when we begin to perfect ourselves, what, what, what? When, we, when we begin to actually be able to perfect ourselves yes. in the logos, yes. I wanted to know if people succeeded in that, would there be a difference between the people? Would there be a creative difference? Or would their likeness be the same? Or would they just be the same? Would there be a creative difference? What? Creative difference. I don't understand well, it. What's creative difference? Like they would be able to think, like would they still have a kind of spark of individuality? Same limitations. Yeah. Or could you have a choir of self-evolved, perfected beings all speaking exactly the same words? at exactly the same time for exactly the same length of time before getting up and exiting in an orderly manner. In a way, I mean, need to talk. In a, well, like, for self-understanding, would, like, would they have their own kind of creative individual spark, like a, a genuine difference? Or would it just be like a one sameness between oh. everyone? If that, if, that, if, that, if that makes my question clear. Would we all write like Pierre? Individuality. Is that another way of putting it? Sure. Or draw like uh, Bradley, like does because he's creative in his a different uh, way. Yeah, but like I would, I would, would individual self blur out? Would it become just self? Yeah, I got your question. Yeah, I'm wondering a little bit why you're having it, but that's a different question. Pierre, what do you think? No, keep on. Because there's. Still, the question of uh, does the self wear out? Yeah, does yeah. the individual self wear out? Huh. You know, oh, everything oh, that's oh, left oh, is oh, same. Is the self universal yeah, or that's really wear out? out? Yeah, like once you perfect yourself through the logos, and you start being able to perceive reality in a way that's truly accurate, along with others. Is there a, a personal creative difference between, say, one philosopher king and the other? Hmm. Personal creative difference. Yeah, like they, they would ha they have their own s different skill set, their own different personality, their own different individual spark. Is this not a theological question? It sounds like a personal fear. Or or would they be kind of like clones? Of yeah. This, this yeah, like, yeah, in a way, is it self, same, perfect same, same. self, or diff, like difference? Is there a kind of difference? It'll weirdly saying, is is there a kind of built-in difference into self already? I guess mm -hmm. this is what I'm trying mm -hmm. to ask. That That's why I allows for individual difference. If that makes sense. Yeah. You could turn it around the other way too. So the theme. But if like there is, if there's a fundamental difference that everybody participates in, right. then there can be no understanding mm -hmm. among people. Hmm. Interesting. Then what separates genius? Is, like what separates genius is if there's no difference, like true genius, like a true like. What would separate like philosopher kings? Well, what like distinction? Is there no distinction? Well, there's a range of, see, the point is at what point are distinctions meaningful and at what point are they not meaningful? Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. that's, that's the primary question. What did that answer do, by the way, to what you just said? There's an optimal difference. What happened to it? Come on, what happened to it? Like it, it, it no longer like the way I view difference stopped being. It stopped becoming like a yes and no, became more of a balance. 
he started with the premise that there may even be in the dreams, as it were, a fundamental difference, that every, everything that shares in the DNA structure contains that same uniqueness. Did you not? Was that the premise you were working on? Hmm. Interesting. No. In a way. Yeah. Oh. And did I say something in respect to that that helped? Uh, what did it do to you? That's all, just wondering. I'll tell you why later, but not now. It makes... <clears throat> a moment ago, you were really holding to the primary necessity for assuming difference. It, it shifted the primary assumption to me. Oh. oh, what did that? Um, Words. <laughs> right? Right, words. But it is. <laughs> you don't have to ask what it means, you've experienced it. It was the realization yeah. that difference wasn't primary. That's right. And then, yeah. Meaning was, yeah. at least in, in respect to difference. Yeah. What did that? Words? Yes. Oh, is that part of the question we've been raising? Yes. Ah. Yes. Mm. Does that suggest, therefore, that words and the way in which they can be arranged can be ranked in terms of their intelligibility? Yes. Oh. If that's true then, the most intelligible expressions in any dialogue would bring a person to the same conclusions or different? Same. Oh, I see. That's interesting. Curious? Hmm. Yeah, okay, I thought of it. Yeah, but we were just, it just kind of <laughs> brings back the question. <laughs> okay. Can we walk? See, we're dodging the question of uh, if words are intelligible and they can be arranged into, in. Uh, and the levels of their intelligibility, then that, that whole set of intelligible words arranged uh, hierarchically in terms of their intelligibility expresses the logos. Mm. Mm. And that's the real issue. Because is it possible that the whole universe is guided by a logos? But that would only be if the universe is itself intelligible. That must match the intelligibility of the Logos. If that's so, then the Logos must be a central aspect of any creation. Right. Right. Ah, but then what is the relationship between the Logos and the self? Mm. Now, this kind of question, we always, in this group, just turn over to Julie. Yeah, give me all the self questions. <laughs> <laughs> or self slash logos questions. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. I like your response. That's more selfish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, curious. I think Michelle would really appreciate that. Wait a minute, I might get a free refill. <laughs> <laughs>